got a problem. Two years prior to last season, the Milwaukee Bucks have been contenders to at least make it to the NBA Finals, but have continuously disappointed in the playoffs. And nothing was more disappointed than losing to the Miami Heat in five games in the bubble. The speculation of the Greek Freaks and Penny free agents in going into last season was going to dominate the headlines. But the reigning back-to-back -back league MVP shocked the whole league before the season started and agreed to a five-year $228 million Supermax extension. This was a huge burden lifted off Giannis himself and his teammates because the free agency questions were going to be constant throughout the season. With all the hype around the Brooklyn Nets and the Eastern Conference, the Bucks actually were able to fly under the radar a little bit last season. Which is crazy when they were the favorites to win the East in the previous two years with a two-time league MVP. Milwaukee posted the NBA's best regular season record in those years, but they knew they had to make something happen. Last offseason, the team acquired point guard Drew Holiday and also a pesky defender in P.J. Tucker, who both were amazing during their title run. Holiday really showed the basketball world how much of a game changer he is. He was a huge upgrade over Eric Bledsoe, who always failed to live up to his regular season performance in the playoffs. The Bucs gave up a lot for Drew Holiday. They gave up three first round picks and they also gave him an extension during last season which was a four-year deal worth $135 million, which included bonuses that could take the deal up to $160 million. With the amount of money invested in the three best players on the team, the pressure was at an all-time high to bring a championship to the city of Milwaukee. The Bucks finished with the third seed in the Eastern Conference. Almost every championship team needs a little luck to go their way in their pursuit of a championship and there's no doubt that the Bucs got their fair share of luck during the playoffs. But when it mattered the most, they looked like the best team in the league. There were some games where they didn't play up to their strengths and got beat almost every time. But when Giannis decided to relentlessly attack the basket, the Bucs were a significantly better team. Let's not forget that Giannis damn near broke his leg against the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I believe his absence was really a blessing because all the role players started gaining confidence. Holiday played better. Brooke Lopez played better. And a lot of other guys played so much better going forward in the playoffs. It's amazing how good Giannis looked at the start of the NBA Finals, which highlights how much work he puts in and how dedicated he is. I wasn't surprised a bit when he hit the ground running as soon as he hit the floor. Giannis doesn't know how to take it easy. When he plays, he plays 110% every game, no matter what. Regardless how you feel about his game, you have to respect that mentality. 50 years ago, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, aka Luol Sender, led the Milwaukee Bucks to their first championships. For decades, it was the only time the franchise reached that height. After being down 0-2, this Bucks team went home to regroup and started their run of winning four straight games. Giannis turned in one of the greatest performances in NBA Finals history, scoring 50 points, a playoff career high, and he also added 14 rebounds. As he has for most of his career, Giannis bullied his way to the basket using his quick first step, spin moves, and brute force. Even from the free throw line where he always struggled, he was nearly perfect going 17 for 19. When you're hitting your free throws like that, you can take all the time you need. He was also a force on the defensive end also, blocking five shots. By the time the final buzzer sounded, there was no doubt who was going to be named the MVP of the series. Like Rudy T said in the 90s, nobody can ever question the heart of a champion. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions, regardless of the breaks they got along the way. When it came down to it, the Bucks looked like the superior team and overcame some adversity to beat a very good Phoenix Suns team. This championship run will give the Bucks a little edge going forward. They have that championship experience. That's something that's very valuable. These guys know what it takes to buckle down, handle the pressure, and ultimately rise to the occasion. Giannis and Chris Middleton are an interesting duo. Giannis is obviously the better overall player, 
but he's not actually the guy you want taking the last shot in the clutch. Middleton has proven over the last couple of years that he can be that guy with the ball in his hands late in games. And he displayed that in the playoffs last season. The best player doesn't always have to be the closer. Remember when Kobe and Shaq played together? Shaq was a dominant force and was just simply unstoppable in the paint. But you knew who got the ball at the end of the game. It was Kobe. That's the same dynamic that Giannis and Chris have, and it works. Giannis is unselfish and smart enough to understand that another teammate could be the best option at certain parts of the game. The Bucks will go into this upcoming season without one of their key members of the championship squad, P.J. Tucker. The Bucks had no cap space and limited assets after having most of their money tied down to their core of Giannis, Chris, and Drew. It's hard to overstate the role P.J. Tucker played in this title run for the Bucks. We all know about the old saying that defense wins championships. And P.J. Tucker brought that grit and nastiness to this defense that constantly frustrated his opponents. When he played, the team's net rating rose by 8 points versus when he was on the bench. Even though Kevin Durant was able to score when he wanted to for the most part, there's no doubt he had to work for every shot when Tucker was guarding. Tucker's presence would certainly be missed. But one of the best moves the Bucks made this offseason was bringing back fan favorite Bobby Portis. The writing seemed to be on the wall when he opted not to exercise his player option for his second year. He had offers from other teams, bigger offers. Nobody saw it coming when Portis signed a two-year, $9 million contract to stay with the Bucks. Portis put in the most efficient season of his career with the Bucks last season, putting up 11 points, 7 rebounds on nearly 21 minutes per game. He was among the best shooters at his position. Quite simply, he could start for most teams, and having him come off the bench for the Bucks is a luxury. Dante DiVincenzo suffered a left foot injury during Game 3 against the Miami Heat and missed the entire playoff run. His absence shortened the rotation more than it already was. He was almost traded during last offseason when it appeared that Bogdan Bagdanovich was going to be signed and traded to the Bucks, but the deal fell through. It's hard to know if that affected DiVincenzo at the start of the season. In 27 minutes as a starter last season, DiVincenzo averaged 10 points, just under 6 rebounds and 3 assists per game. His field goal percentage dropped to 42%, which is down from 45% in the second season. The potential of the Bucks going forward will rest on his shoulders. The Bucks will have limited assets and limited cap space over the next 4 or 5 years. And their 2022 first round pick now is the only first round pick they have control over for a long time. So DiVincenzo really needs to elevate his game and show the potential he showed in the NCAA championship game when he won the Most Outstanding Player Award. This offseason, the Bucks were able to trade for guard Grayson Allen and sign Rodney Hood and George Hill in free agency. With the loss of Brent Forbes, a player like Allen should be a more than capable replacement for Brent Forbes. Allen did shoot over 40% from three last season, and he also is an underrated defender. If anything, this will be an upgrade. And George Hill is most definitely an upgrade over Jeff Teague. Teague looked like a player that didn't even deserve to be in the league anymore last season. George Hill was one of the best shooters in the league during his last season with the Milwaukee Bucks, and he's still a good defensive player at his age. He spent a year and a half with the Bucks from 2018 to 2020. The Bucks now have a legit point guard this year. Rodney Hood is still trying to shake off the rust ever since he ruptured his Achilles tendon in December of 2019 when he played for the Blazers. Hood is coming off his least productive season of his career after splitting the year with the Blazers and the Raptors. He has battled a lot of injuries in the past two years, and barring any setbacks, he is someone who can immediately come off the bench and give instant offense. With what the Bucks went through last season and finding a way to push through and win a championship, that will give them so much confidence going into this season. The Bucks still have a great team with great chemistry, and I believe they will have a solid chance to repeat. I have the Bucks finishing in second place in the Eastern Conference with a 55 and 27 record. The loss of PJ Tucker will be huge, but I believe the Bucks will be able to overcome that. The big three have established themselves as one of the best in the league, and they are now champions. They know the grind. They know what it takes. 
and that experience will allow them to still compete for championships going forward. DiVincenzo will need to prove to be a productive starter night in and night out. He could elevate the team's potential even more if he plays up to his capabilities. Even though the Bucks are champions, most of the league still believes that the Brooklyn Nets are the top team in the Eastern Conference. And that will allow the Bucks to once again be under the radar throughout the regular season. It resulted in a championship last season, and it could happen again. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do it right now for future NBA content.